Chapter fifty five of Jerusalem to Revelations A Quartet of Spiritual Experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Purgatorio One Introduction to the Purgatorio the shore of the island of purgatory cato to run o'er better water hoists her sails the little vessel of my genius now which leaves behind her such a cruel sea and of that second realm i'll sing wherein the human spirit purifies itself and groweth worthy to ascend to heaven but here let poetry arise from death since holy muses yours i am and let calliope hear somewhat higher soaring with those sweet tones accompany my song whose power the miserable magpies felt so keenly that of pardon they despaired the oriental sapphire's tender hue now gathering in the sky's unclouded face as far as to the first of circles pure began again to give mine eyes delight when forth i issued from the deadly air which with its gloom had filled mine eyes and heart the beauteous planet which incites to love veiling with light the fishes in her train was causing all the eastern sky to laugh round to the right i turned and set my mind upon the other pole and saw four stars never perceived save by the first of men the sky appeared to enjoy their little flames o oh, region of the north that widowed art because deprived of gazing thereupon when i had from the sight of them withdrawn turning a little toward the other pole whence now the wane had wholly disappeared a lone old man beside me i perceived deserving of such reverence in his looks that no son owes his father any more long was the beard he wore and partly white as likewise was the hair upon his head two locks of which hung down upon his breast and so the rays of those four holy stars adorned his face with splendour that to me he looked as if the sun were facing him who then are ye that gainst the blind streams have from the eternal prison escaped he said moving the while those venerable locks who led you or what served you as a lamp when forth ye issued from the night profound which makes the infernal veil for ever black are broken thus the laws of hell's abyss or through new counsel is there change in heaven that ye though damned are come to these my cliffs my leader thereupon took hold of me and with his words and with his hands and signs imposed respect upon my legs and brow he then replied i came not of myself from heaven came down a lady at whose prayer i help this man with my companionship but since thy will it is that our true state should be explained to thee more clearly mine it cannot be that this should be denied thee not yet hath this man his last evening seen but through his folly was so near to it that he was left but very little time as i have told thee i was sent to save his life nor was there any other way than this to which i have addressed myself 
I have shown him all the people who are guilty, and now I mean those spirits to reveal, who need thy jurisdiction cleanse themselves. Long would it take to tell thee how I led him. Virtue descendeth from on high, which helps me lead him to see thee and to hear thee speak. His coming, therefore, pleased to welcome. Freedom he seeks, which is so dear, as knoweth he who gives up life therefore. This thou dost know, since death for its sake was not bitter to thee in Utica, where thou didst leave the robe, which on the great day will so brightly shine. The eternal edicts are not void through us, for this man lived and I am not bound by Minos, but of that circle am, where in the eyes of thy chaste Marcia are, O holy breast, whose looks implore thee still to hold her thine. For love of her, then, yield thee unto us. Permit us through thy seven domains to go. My grateful praise of thee are bare to her, if to be mentioned there below thy dame. Marcia, so pleased mine eyes, he then replied, that while upon the other side I was, I granted all the favours she desired. Now that she dwells beyond the evil stream, no longer can she move me, by the law made at the moment when I issued thence. But if a lady of heaven impel and guide thee, as thou hast said, no need of flattering prayers, Suffice it thee that for her sake thou ask. Go then, and see that with a leafless rush thou gird this man, and that thou wash his face, so that therefrom all foulness thou remove, for twere not fit he went, with eyes o'ercast by any mist, before the first of those who serve as ministers of paradise. This little isle around its lowest base, down yonder, where the waves are beating it, produces rushes on its yielding ooze. No other plant, like one that brought forth leaves, or hardened, can maintain its life down there, because it yields not when receiving blows. Thereafter be not hither your return, the sun which rises now will show you how to climb the mountain by the easiest slope. Thereat he disappeared, and I arose without a word, and to my leader's side I closely drew, and toward him turned mine eyes, and he began, Son, follow thou my steps, let us turn backward, for the shore slopes down on this side, toward its lowly boundaries. The dawn was vanquishing the morning breeze which fled before it, so that from afar I recognized the shimmering of the sea. We now were going o'er the lonely plain, as one who to a road he lost returns, until he find it seems to go in vain. When we were there, where with the sun the dew still struggles on, through being in a place where, for the breeze, it slowly melts away, my teacher, having spread out both his hands, rested them gently on the tender grass. Whence I, who of his purpose was aware, yielded to him the cheeks my tears had stained. He then brought all that natural colour back, which hell had on my countenance concealed. We came thereafter to that lonely shore, which never saw its waters sail by one who afterward expected a return. Here, as the other pleased, he girded me. O oh, wondrous sight, for like the humble plant which he had chosen, another instantly sprang forth again from where he tore the first. Purgatorio two, The shore of the island of Purgatory The angel pilot and arriving souls And now already had the sun arrived at that horizon whose meridian circle rests with its zenith o'er jerusalem 
and night which circles opposite thereto was issuing from the ganges with the scales which when she gains are falling from her hands so that the white and pure vermilion cheeks of beautiful aurora where i was were turning orange through excessive age along the seaside we were lingering still like folk who taking thought about their road go on in heart but with their body stay when lo as at the approach of morning mars because of heavy vapours groweth red down in the west above the ocean's floor even so i saw may i again behold it a light which o'er the sea so swiftly moved that no flight is as rapid as its motion from which when i a moment had withdrawn mine eyes to ask a question of my leader again i saw it grown more bright and large and on each side of it there then appeared i knew not what white thing and underneath little by little came another forth meanwhile my teacher uttered not a word until the first white object looked like wings then having recognized the pilot well he cried see see it now that thou bend thy knees this is god's angel fold thy hands henceforth shalt thou behold such officers as this see how he so scorns human instruments as to wish neither all nor other sail than his own wings between such distant shores see how he holds them straight up toward the sky stroking the air with those eternal plumes which do not moult as mortal feathers do and then as more and more the bird divine drew near to us the brighter he appeared therefore mine eyes endured him not near by but down i cast them with a little boat he came ashore so agile and so light the water swallowed up no part of it such on its stern the heavenly pilot stood that he would bless one where he but described more than a hundred spirits sat with him when israel out of egypt came they all in unison were singing there together with what is written after in that psalm then having signed them with the holy cross whereat all cast themselves upon the shore he went away as swiftly as he came the crowd which stayed seemed strangers to the place and gazed around them there and gazed around them there as doth a man who with unwonted things acquaints himself the sun which from the middle of the sky had hunted capricorn with arrows bright was shooting forth the day on every side when those new people raised their brows towards us and said if ye know how point out to us the road that one should take to reach the mount and virgil answered ye perchance believe that we have had experience of this place but we are pilgrim strangers like yourselves we came just now a little while before you but by another way so rough and hard that going up will now seem play to us the souls who by my breathing had become aware that i was still a living being in their astonishment turned death-like pale and as around a messenger who bears the olive people surge to hear the news and as to crowding none of them seem shy so one and all those fortune-favoured souls fixed on my face their gaze as if forgetting to go and make their spirits beautiful then one among them i beheld advance in such a loving manner to embrace me that it persuaded me to do the like 
oh save in your appearance empty shades three times behind it did i clasp my hands and to my breast therewith as oft returned with wonder i believe i painted me smiling because of this the shade drew back while following after i pressed further on with gentle words he told me to desist then who it was i knew and begged of him to stop a little while and speak with me as thee i loved when in my mortal body he answered me even so when freed i love thee therefore i stop but wherefore goest thou Casella mine said i i take this journey that where i am i may return again but why from thee hath so much time been taken and he to me no outrage hath been done me if he who takes both when and whom he likes hath more than once refused me passage here for to a righteous will is his conformed yet peacefully these three months hath he taken whoever wished to enter into his boat hence i who now was toward the seashore bent where tiber's water mingles with the salt was with benignity received by him at yonder river's mouth towards which his wings even now are turned for those who go not down toward acheron always assemble there and i if some new law take not from thee the memory of the practice of the song of love which used to quiet all my longings be pleased a little to console therewith my spirit which because of coming here when in its body is so sore distressed the love that talketh with me in my mind he thereupon began to sing so sweetly that still within me is its sweetness heard my teacher i and those that with him were seemed as contented as if none of us had any other thing upon his mind absorbed in listening to his notes we all were motionless when lo the grave old man who cried ye laggard spirits what is this what means this negligence and standing still run to the mount and strip ye off the slough which lets not god be visible to you even as when picking grains of wheat or tares dubs met together at their feeding calm and not displaying their accustomed pride if anything appear that frightens them all of a sudden leave their food alone because assailed by greater cause for care even so i saw that new come family give up the song and toward the hillside move like one who goes but whither knoweth not nor was in less haste our departure made purgatorio three anti purgatory the repentant who died excommunicated although their sudden flight had scattered them over the plain and turned them toward the mount where justice probes us with its penalties more closely to my faithful mate i drew and how without him had i run my race or who had drawn me up the mountain side to me he seemed o'erwhelmed with self-reproach o oh, conscience when both dignified and clear how sharp a bite a slight fault is to thee when once his feet had given up the haste which of their dignity deprives all acts my mind to one thought limited at first enlarged its scope with eager interest now and toward that mountain i addressed my gaze which skyward rises highest from the sea the sun which back of us was flaming red in front of me was broken in the shape wherein i lent its rays a resting place i turned and at my side i looked afraid of having been abandoned when i saw the ground was dark in front of me alone 
when wholly turned my comforter began why still distrustful dost thou not believe that i am with thee and am guiding thee tis evening now where buried lies the body wherein i cast a shadow naples now possesses it from brindisi twas taken if then in front of me no shadow fall marvel no more than at the heavenly spheres thou wouldst which hinder not each other's rays that power enables bodies such as mine to suffer torments both of heat and cold which wills not that its ways be shown to us insane is he that hopes our human reason will ever travel o'er the boundless path o'er which one substance in three persons moves be satisfied o human race with facts for if ye could have seen the cause of all no need had been for mary to bear child and ye've seen vainly longing men so great that their desire would else have been appeased which given them is for an eternal grief i speak of aristotle and of plato and many others here he bowed his head and saying nothing more remained disturbed meanwhile we had attained the mountain's foot and there we found the rocky cliff so steep that legs would there be nimble all in vain tween lerici and terbia the loneliest and wildest path is if compared with that a safely climbed and easy flight of stairs now who knows on which side the hill so slopes then said my teacher as he stayed his steps that he who wingless goes can make the ascent meanwhile as he was questioning his mind about the path and held his face bowed down and i was gazing upward round the cliff upon my left a throng of souls appeared who toward us moved their feet it did not seem to move so slowly were they coming on teacher said i lift up thine eyes behold on this side people who will give us counsel if thou canst not obtain it from thyself he then looked up and with relief replied let us go toward them for they slowly come and thou sweet son be steadfast in thy hope those people were as yet as far away after a thousand of our steps i mean as a good thrower's hand would reach when all pressed up against the lofty bank's hard mass and stayed there still and huddled up together as when in doubt a walker stops to look virgil began o ye whose end was good o now elected spirit by the peace which i believe ye all look forward to say where the mount so lies that going up be possible for us for loss of time to him who knoweth most is most displeasing as from the fold young sheep are wont to come by ones and twos and threes while timidly the others stay with downcast eyes and muzzle and what the first one doth so do the rest all huddling up to her in case she stop simple and quiet nor yet knowing why even so the leader of that favoured flock i saw start forward then and toward us come modest in face and dignified in gait when those who were in front the light beheld so broken on the ground upon my right that gainst the cliff a shadow fell from me they stopped and backward drew a little way and all the others coming on behind not knowing why they did so did the same without your asking i affirm to you that this you see a human body is therefore the sun's light on the ground is broken be not surprised then but believe that not without a power that cometh down from heaven is he attempting to surmount this wall 
my teacher thus those worthy people then as with the back part of their hands they waved said turn them and ahead of us go in and one of them began whoe'er thou art as thus thou goest turn thy face recall if thou hast ever seen me in the world toward him i turned and on him fixed my gaze blond handsome and of noble mien he was although an eyebrow by a blow was cut when i had with due modesty disclaimed having e'er seen him there he said now see and showed me i upon his breast a wound then with a smile he said manfred am i the grandson of the empress constance hence i beg thee that on thy return thou go to my fair daughter mother of the honour of sicily and aragon and should aught else be told her tell her thou the truth after my body by two mortal stabs had been pierced through in tears i gave myself to that one who forgiveth willingly my sins were horrible indeed and yet the goodness infinite hath arms so wide that it receiveth all who turn to it and if cosenza's pastor who by clement was sent to hunt me down hath then perused this page in god's book as he should have done my body's bones would still be lying there hard by the bridge's head near benevento under the keeping of the heavy can bathed by the rain the wind now blows them round outside the kingdom near the verdes banks whither he moved them with extinguished lights not by their cursing his eternal love so lost that it cannot return again as long as hope hath still a speck of green tis true that he that dieth in contempt of holy church though at the very last he may repent outside this mountain's bank must stay for all the time that he hath been in his presumption thirty times as long unless by good prayers shortened be this ban see now if thou canst make me glad by telling my good costanza both where thou hast seen me and of this interdict for one is here greatly advanced by those that are beyond Purgatorio four, anti-purgatory, the first ledge, those who neglected repentance until death. When e'er, because of pleasure or of pain, received by any faculty of ours, our soul is wholly centred thereupon, it seems to heed no other faculty, and this is gainst that wrong belief which holds that one soul in us or another burns therefore when anything is heard or seen which toward it holds the soul intently turned time passes by and one perceives it not since one thing is the faculty which harks and that which holdeth all the soul another this last is bound as twere the former free of this I real experience had while hearing and wondering at that spirit for the sun had climbed up fifty full degrees at least though i had not perceived it when we came to where those souls cried out to us together the place which you are asking for is here up doth a farmer when the grapes grow dark close up a wider opening in a hedge with but a little forkful of his thorns than was the entrance there through which my leader and i behind him mounted all alone when once the crowd had gone away from us one climbs san leo and descends to noli one wins the summit of bismantaba held solely by one's feet but one up here would have to fly with the swift wings i mean and plumes of great desire behind the guide who gave me hope and furnished me with light as up within the cloven rock we climbed 
its walls on each side closely hemmed us in while under us the ground both feet and hands required when on the high cliff's upper edge we were and out upon the open slope which way my teacher shall we go said i and he to me take thou no backward step keep gaining ground behind me up the mount until some guide who knows appears to us so high the summit was that it surpassed our sight and steeper far the slope than were a line from centre to mid quadrant drawn weary was i when i began to speak o oh, gentle father turn around and see how i remain alone unless thou stop draw thyself up my son as far as there he said and somewhat higher pointed out a ledge on that side circling all the hill his words so spurred me that i forced myself to crawl behind him on my hands and knees until the girding ledge was neath my feet there both of us sat down and faced the east whence we had made the ascent for looking back upon a traversed course is wont to help first to the shores below i turned mine eyes then raised them to the sun and was amazed that we were smitten by it on our left then raised them to the sun and was amazed that we were smitten by it on our left the poet well perceived that i was gazing dumbfounded at the chariot of the light which now was rising between the north and us if castor said he then to me and pollux were in the company of yonder mirror which up and down in turn conducts its light thou wouldst the zodiac's ruddy part behold revolving still more closely to the bears unless it issued from its ancient path if thou wouldst understand how this can be collect thy thoughts within thee and imagine both zion and this mount so placed on earth that both of them one sole horizon have and different hemispheres and thou wilt see how that the road which phaeton could not take alas for him must pass this mount on one while passing that one on the other side if thine intelligence but clearly heed surely my teacher never have i seen said i as clearly as i now perceive where once my mind appeared to be at fault how the mid-circle of supernal motion which in a certain art is called equator and ebb between the sun and winter stays lies toward the north for reasons given by thee as far on this side as the hebrew people ever beheld it toward the heated parts but if it please thee i would gladly know how far we have to go because the mount higher ascends than eyes of mine can rise such is this mountain said he then to me that always hard to climb at first below it pains one less the higher one ascends hence when so pleasant to thee it shall seem that going up shall be to thee as easy as floating with the current in a boat thou then shalt have attained the pathway's end hope there to rest thee from thy breathless toil no more i answer this i know for truth when he had ended what he had to say the voice of one near by cried out perhaps said that shall happen thou wilt need to sit on hearing this we both of us turned round and saw a massive boulder on our left which neither i nor he had seen before thither we drew and there some persons were who lingered in the shade behind the rock as one is wont to do through indolence and one of them who weary seemed to me was sitting with his arms around his knees and down between the latter held his face oh my sweet lord 
said I then, turn thine eyes on yonder man, who shows himself to be more lazy than if sloth his sister were. Then, turning round toward us, and giving heed, he moved his face no more than o'er his thigh, and said, Go up now, thou that active art. I then knew who it was, nor did the strain, which quickened still my breath a little, hinder my going to him. Yet when at his side I was, he barely raised his head, and said, Hast thou at last seen why it is the sun driveth his car on thy left shoulder here? His lazy actions, and his few short words, impelled my lips to smile a little. Then, Balakwa, I began, I grieve for thee no more, but tell me why thou sittest here, art waiting for a guide, or hast thou now merely resumed thy customary mood? And he, what, brother, is the use of climbing? The bird of God, who at the gate is seated, would not allow me to approach the pangs. The sky must first turn round me here outside, as long as ever in my life it did, since I delayed good sighs until the end, unless before them I be helped by prayers arising from a heart that lives in grace. Of what avail are those unheard in heaven? But now the poet, climbing on ahead, was saying, Come now on with me, thou seest that our meridian by the sun is touched, and that, already from the Ganges' banks, night covers up Morocco with her feet. End of chapter 55Chapter 56 of Jerusalem to Revelations, A Quartet of Spiritual Experience, by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Purgatorio 5. Anti-Purgatory the second ledge the negligent who died by violence already had i parted from those shades and in my leader's steps was following on when one behind me pointing with his finger cried out see how the light seems not to shine upon the left side of that lower man who seems to act like one that's still alive Hearing this speech, I turned my eyes, and saw that with astonishment they gazed at me, at me alone, and at the broken light. Why is thy mind so sore perplexed? Then said my teacher, that thou slackest thy pace. What carest thou for what is whispered here? Follow thou me, and let the people talk. Firm as a tower remain, which never shakes its top however hard the winds may blow for from himself he ever turns his mark in whom one thought wells up behind another for each of them impairs the other's strength what could i say in answer save i come and this i said tinged slightly with the colour which sometimes makes one worthy of forgiveness meanwhile a little way ahead of us, some people crosswise o'er the slope were coming, singing the miserere verse by verse. When they became aware that through my body I gave no passage to the rays of light, they changed their chant into a long hoarse, Oh! And two of them, acting as messengers, ran out to meet us, and inquiring said, Cause us to know what kind of life is yours my teacher answered ye may go your way and unto those that sent you out report that real flesh this man's body is and if as i suppose they stopped because they saw his shadow 
they've been answered well enough. If they respect him, it may profit them. I never saw ignited vapours cleave at nightfall an unclouded sky, or break so rapidly from August clouds at sunset, that these returned not up in shorter time, and once there, with the rest they veered toward us, as would a troop that ran without a curb. These people who are crowding us are many, the poet said, and come to beg of thee, therefore go on and listen on thy way. O soul that goest to be glad, they cried, as on they came, with those limbs which thou hadst when thou wast born, a little stay thy steps. Recall if thou hast e'er seen one of us, that yonder thou mayst carry news of him. Why, pray, dost thou go on? Ah, why not stop? We all were slain of all by violence, and sinners were until our latest hour. Then light from heaven so caused us to be wed that we, repentant and forgiving, issued from life at peace with God, who in our hearts stirs us with grievous longings to behold him. And I, howe'er I gaze upon your faces, none do I recognize, and yet if aught within my power can please you, well-born souls, ask it, and I will do it, by the peace which, following the feet of such a guide, hath now become my quest from world to world. And one began, Each trusts in thy good help without an oath, provided lack of power cut not thy good will short. Hence I, who speak alone before the others, beg of thee, if e'er thou see the country which extends between Romagna and the land of Charles, be courteous to me with thy prayers in Fano, that supplications do be made for me, to help me purge away my grievous sins. It was from there I came, but those deep wounds, whence flowed the blood, where in my life resided, were given me in the Antenore's lap, where I had trusted I should be most safe. The Lord of Esti, who was angry with me, beyond the bounds of justice, had it done. Yet toward La Mira, had I only fled, when at Ariago I was overtaken, still yonder would I be, where people breathe. Toward the lagoon I ran, whose reeds and mire so hampered me I fell, and there a pool formed from my veins I saw upon the ground. Then said another, So may that desire which draws thee to the lofty mount be granted, with kindly pity, prithee, help thou mine. I, Montefeltro, was. I am Buoncante. Giovanna cares not for me, nor do others. Hence among these I go with head bowed down. And I to him, What force was it, or chance, caused thee to stray so far from Campaldino? that never hath thy burial place been known. Oh, he replied, a river called Archiano flows crosswise at the Casentino's foot and takes its rise among the Apennines above the Hermitage. There, where its name is lost, I came, a fugitive on foot, pierced through the throat and staining with my blood the flame. And there it was, I lost my sight, and ended speech with Mary's name, and there I fell, and all alone my flesh remained. The truth I tell, tell thou among the living, God's angel took me, while the one from hell cried out, Why dost thou rob me, thou from heaven? Thou bearest hence this man's eternal part, because of one small tear which takes him from me but I shall with the rest deal otherwise. Well, knowest thou how damp vapours in the air, as soon as they ascend to where the cold affects them, into water change again. He joined that wicked will, 
which asks for naught but evil with intelligence and stirred the mists and wind by power his nature gave the valley thereupon when day was spent he covered o'er with fog from Protomanio up to the mountain chain and made the sky so lowering o'er it that the pregnant air to water turned the rain poured down and what the soil absorbed not reached the rivulets then having joined the torrent brooks it rushed so swiftly toward the royal stream that naught could hold it back the swift Archiana then hard by its outlet found my frozen body and as it swept it on into the arno loosened the cross which with my arms i made upon my breast when sorrow's pain o'erwhelmed me along its banks and bed it rolled me on then covered me and wrapped me with its spoils prithee when to the world thou hast returned and when from thy long journey thou art rested after the second spirit said the third do thou remember me who pia am sienna made me marama me unmade he knoweth what this means who previously had in betrothal ringed me with his gem purgatorio six anti purgatory the negligent who died by violence address to italy and florence whene'er a game of dice is broken up the one who loses sorrowing stays behind and learns how sadly he repents the throes while with the other all the people leave one goes before one grasps him from behind and at his side one asks to be remembered and he stops not but that one heeds and this the one whose hand he takes no longer crowds and from the throng he thus defends himself e'en such as he was i in that dense crowd for as i this and that way turned my face and promised each i freed myself therefrom here was the aretine who met his death from gin de taco's cruel arms and he who running madly in pursuit was drowned here frederick novello prayed with hands outstretched and he of pisa who induced worthy marzuko to reveal his strength count also i beheld here and the soul through spite and envy from its body parted and not so he maintained through crime committed Pierre de la brasse i mean and here while still on earth let brabant's lady see to it that mong the worst flock she be not for this when i was free from each and all those shades who only prayed that others pray for them that their becoming holy might be sped it seems that thou deniest i began o oh, thou my light expressly in a text that prayer can cause a change in heaven's decrees and yet these people only pray for this could it then be that this their hope is vain or is thy saying not quite clear to me and he to me that which i wrote is clear nor yet delusive is this people's hope if it be looked at with a healthy mind for justice stoops not from her lofty height because love's ardour all that once fulfils what he who dwelleth here must satisfy and there where i decided on this point the fault was not made good again by praying because the prayer discordant was with god yet in so deep a doubt decide thou not unless she bid thee do so who alike shall be between thine intellect and truth i know not if thou understand i speak of beatrice thou seer of above smiling and happy 
on this mountain's top. And I. Let's go then, Lord, with greater haste, for now I grow not weary as before, and see the hillside casts its shadow now. We shall go forward with this day, he answered, as long as we are able. But the case is otherwise than what thou deemst it. Ere thou shalt be up there, thou him shalt see return, who now so shields him with the hill, that thou dost not compel his rays to break. But yonder see a soul who all alone is seated, and toward us is looking now. He will point out to us the quickest way. We came to him, O Lombard soul, how full of self-respect and noble scorn thou wast, and in the moving of thine eyes how slow and dignified. Nought did he say to us, but let us go our way, and only gazed as would a couching lion in repose. Virgil, meanwhile, drew near to him, and begged that he would show to us the best ascent, and he, to his request, made no reply, but asked us of our country and condition. And my kind leader was with Mantua beginning, when the self-collected shade from where he was sprang up to meet him, saying, O oh, Mantuan, I'm so dull of thy town, and each the other thereupon embraced. Ah, oh, Italy, thou slave, thou inn of woe, ship without pilot in a mighty storm, not queen of provinces, but house of shame. So instant ready was that noble soul, but at the sweet sound of his city's name, to welcome here his fellow-citizen. And yet within thee now thy living sons are not exempt from war, and those one wall and moat and close upon each other prey. All round thy coastline search its shores, poor wretch, and then within thy bosom look, and learn if any part of thee be blessed with peace. What boots it that Justinian rearrange thy bridle, if thy saddle vacant be? Had it not been for that, thy shame were less. And ye, are ye, that ought to be devout, and so let Caesar in his saddle set, if well ye heeded God's advice to you, behold how wild this animal has grown, through being uncorrected by the spur, since ye first set your hands upon her reign. O German Albert, thou that dost forsake this creature, now become untamed and wild, and altars to bestride her saddle bows, may some just judgment from the stars before thy blood, and may it so unheard of be and plain, that it may frighten thy successor, for, hell by greed of lands outside its bounds, thou and thy father also have allowed the empire's garden to become a waste. Come, see the Montagues and Capulets, Manaldi and Philipsi, careless man, already troubled those and these in dread. Come, come, thou cruel man, and see the oppression of thy nobility, and right their wrongs, and thou shalt see how safe is Santa Fior. Come, see thy Rome, that widowed and alone is shedding tears, and day and night is calling. Why dost thou not, my Caesar, stay with me? Come, see the people, how they love each other, and if for us no pity move thy soul, come, them, and shame thee for thine own renown. And if I be allowed, O Jove supreme, thou that for us wast crucified on earth, are thy just eyes, too, turned away elsewhere? Or in thy counsel's depths art thou in this, a preparation making for some good, from our perception utterly cut off? For all Italia's towns are full of tyrants, and a Marcellus every churl is deemed, who comes to play a petty henchman's role my florence 
well mayest thou be satisfied with this digression which concerns thee not thanks to thy people who look out for that many at heart are just but slow to shoot lest to the bow uncounselled they should come but thy folk on their lips alone are just many refuse to bear the common burden but thy folk eagerly respond and cry although uncalled i'll load myself therewith be joyful then since thou hast cause to be thou that art rich that peaceful art and wise whether i speak the truth results conceal not athens and lacedaemon they that framed the ancient laws and were so civilized in living well made but a little mark compared with thee that dost so carefully provide thee that thy fine october spinning as far as mid-november reaches not how many times within thy memory hast thou changed laws and coinage offices and customs and thy membership renewed and if thou well recall and face the light thou see thy likeness to a suffering woman who on a feather bed can find no rest but seeks by tossing to relieve her pain purgatorio seven anti-purgatory the veil of flowers princes intent on earthly glory after the words of greeting dignified and glad had three and four times been repeated sordello drawing back said who are ye or ever yet the spirits who deserved to rise to god were toward this man directed my bones were buried by octavian's order virgil am i and through no other guilt did i lose heaven than through not having faith twas thus my leader thereupon replied like one who sudden sees before him aught he wonders at and as he says it is and no it's not believes and disbelieves such did the former seem and then his head he bowed and humbly turning back to him embraced him where inferior men take hold o oh, glory of the latins said he then through whom o oh, glory of the latins said he then through whom our language showed what it could do eternal honour of my native town what merit or what grace shows thee to me tell me if i deserve to hear thy words if thou from hell art come and from what cloister through all the circles of the woeful realm he answered him have i come hither virtue from heaven impelled me and therewith i come twas not for doing aught but for not doing i lost the sight of that exalted sun thou longest for and which was known by me too late there is a place below not sad because of pain but only gloom where moans sound not as wailings but are merely sighs there with those little innocents i dwell who not delivered yet from human guilt were bitten by the teeth of death and there with those i dwell who did not clothe themselves with the three holy virtues but who knew the others without vice and practised all but give us if thou no one can some sign whereby the sooner we may reach the place where purgatory hath its real beginning no fixed place is assigned us he replied i may go upward and around i'll join thee and be thy guide as far as i can go but see already how the day declines and one at night cannot ascend it hence were well to think of some fair resting place here to the right are souls that dwell apart if thou permit me i will lead thee to them and not without delight will they be known how then is this was answered should one wish to mount by night would some one hinder him or would one not ascend through lack of power then 
with his finger. Good, Sordala marked the ground. And see, he said, when once the sun is gone, thou couldst not even cross this time, though not because aught else than gloom of night would hinder one from climbing. That it is puzzles the will with impotence. One could, however, downward go again therewith, and walking o'er the hillside, won the round, while still the horizon kept the day confined. My lord then said, as if in wonder lost, Do thou then lead us thither, where thou saidst that one, while waiting, can enjoy himself? But little had we gone away from there, when I perceived the hill was hollowed out, as here on earth our hillside valleys are. Thither, that shade said, we'll betake ourselves, where of itself the hillside forms a lap, and there will we await the coming day. A winding path there was, nor steep nor level, which led us to a border of the dell, where more than half away the hillside falls. Gold and fine silver, scarlet and white lead, indigo blue, woods clear and shining brown, and green of emeralds when newly flaked, would each in hue be vanquished by the grass and flowers found growing in that bosom dell, as by the greater vanquished is the less. Nature not only had been painting there, but with the fragrance of a thousand scents was making up a blend unknown on earth. Here, seated on the grass among the flowers, Salve Regina, singing, souls I saw, who for the dell could not be seen outside. Before the waning sunlight nests itself began the mantuan who had guided us, Desire me not to lead you among these. Much better from this border shall ye learn to know the acts and faces of them all, than greeted among them in the dale below. The one that sitteth highest up, and seems to have neglected what he should have done, and with his mouth joins not the other's songs, was Emperor Rudolph, he who might have healed the wounds that so have left Italia dead, that by another she reviveth late. He who appears to cheer him ruled the land, where rise the waters which the Malda gives the Elb, and the Elb gives the sea. Named Ottokar he was, in swaddling clothes far better than is Wenceslaus' son, on whom a bearded man feed lust and ease. That small-nosed man, who close in council seems, with him that hath so kind a countenance, died fleeing and displiring the lily. Look at him yonder, how he smites his breast, and see the other one, who for his cheek hath, sighing, made a cushion of his hand. Father and father-in-law, of France's bane, they know the latter's foul and vicious life. Hence comes the sorrow that so pierces them. The one who so large-limbed appears, and joins in song with him who hath the manly nose, was girded with the cord of every worth. And if the youth who seated is behind him, had, following after him, remained as king, Worth would indeed have gone from vase to vase, which of the other heirs cannot be said. The kingdoms James and Frederick hold, but none is owner of the better heritage. Seldom doth human righteousness ascend among the branches. This is will by him who gives it, that of him it may be asked. My word concern the large-nosed man no less than the other, Peter, who was singing with him, whence both Apulia and Provence are grieved. That plant is as inferior to its seed, as of her husband, Constance still vaunts more than Beatrice and Margaret do at theirs. 
behold the king known for his simple life henry of england seated there alone he in his branches better issue hath he that among them lower on the ground is sitting and looks up is marquis william for whom both alexandria and her war make monferrat and canavese weep purgatorio eight anti-purgatory the veil of flowers princes intent on earthly glory the serpent twas now the hour which homeward turns the longing and melts the heart of those that sail the sea the day they've said good-bye to tender friends and thrills with love the pilgrim newly sped if from afar he hear a tolling bell that seems to mourn the slowly dying day when i began to render hearing vain and of those souls watch one who risen up was asking for attention with his hand he joined his palms and raising them on high turned toward the east his eyes with steadfast gaze as if to god he said i heed naught else ere daylight fadeth issued from his mouth with such devoutness and with note so sweet i heed naught else ere daylight fadeth issued from his mouth with such devoutness and with note so sweet that i was made unmindful of myself thereat the others sweetly and devoutly followed that soul and sang the whole hymn through fixing their gaze upon the spheres above sharpen thine eyes here reader for the truth for now its veil is certainly so thin that easy is the passage into it i saw that army of the gentle born gazing on high in silence after this as if in expectation pale and meek and issuing from above and coming down two angels with two fiery swords i saw which broken off were of their points deprived as green they were as little new-born leaves and clothed with garments which behind them trailed were stroked and fanned by burdened plumes one came and poised somewhat above us while the other alighted on the hillside opposite so that the people there remained between i well perceived that golden was their hair but on their faces vision went astray as would a power confounded by excess from mary's bosom both of them are come sordello said to guard this sheltered vale against the serpent which will soon arrive hence i who knew not by what path turned round chilled through with fear and to the trusted shoulders drew closely back sordello thereupon began and now among the mighty shades let us descend and we will speak with them great will they be pleased to see you here only three steps i think did i go down and was below then one i saw who looked at me alone as if he wished to know me the air had for some time been growing dark but not so much as tween his eyes and mine not to reveal what it concealed before toward me he came and i toward him advanced noble judge nino when i saw that not among the damned thou wast how glad i was no greetings fair were left unsaid between us and then he asked how long ago didst thou o'er the far waters reach the mountain's foot oh i exclaimed across the fields of woe i came this morn and in the first life am though by this going are the other whim when once my answer had been heard 
Sordello, and he drew back, like people suddenly perplexed, the first to Virgil turned, the other to one who there was seated, crying out, Get up, comrade, come and see what God hath as a favour willed. Then turned toward me, By that rare gratitude thou owest him, who hides his primal why in such a way that there's no fording it. When thou art past the wide waves, ask my Joan to pray for me, where to the innocent replies are given. I think a mother loves me now no more, for those white wimples hath she laid aside, which she, poor soul, must needs want back again. Through her one understands with greatest ease how long the fire of love in woman lasts, unless rekindled up by sight and touch. The viper which conducts the Milanese afield will never make as beautiful a tomb for her as would Galura's cock. These were the words he used, his countenance marked with the impress of that righteous zeal which burneth in the heart with temperate flame. My greedy eyes now sought the sky alone, and only there where slowest are the stars as nearest to its axis is a wheel my leader then what art thou looking at up there my son and i at those three torches wherewith the pole on this side wholly burns then he the four bright stars which thou this morn didst see are low down on the other side and these have risen there where those were them. While he was speaking thus, Sordello drew him aside, and saying, Yonder, see our foe, lifted his finger up to have him look. On that side, where the little hollowed veil hath no defence, a snake there was, like that perhaps, which gave the bitter fruit to Eve. On through the grass and flowers the wicked reptile glided, and turning back its head at times, was licking like a beast that smooths itself. I did not see, and therefore cannot tell, how the celestial falcons gan to move, but both I clearly saw when once in motion. When cleft by their green wings, it heard the air, the serpent fled, and back the angels turning, regained their posts above with equal flight. The shade who, when he called him to the judge, had closely drawn throughout the whole assault, had not one moment loosed his gaze from me. So may the lantern leading thee above find in thy will the wax that is required for one to reach the enamel green on high, he thus began. If thou of Valdimagra or of its neighbouring land dost know true news, tell it to me, who once was mighty there. Carrado Malaspina I was called. I'm not the elder, but from him descended. I bore my race the love which here is cleansed. Oh, said I then to him, I've never been in your domains, but where throughout all Europe dwelleth a man who knows them not. The fame which honoureth your house proclaims its lords, proclaims its district, so that even he knows of them, who hath never been there yet. I swear to you, so may I go on high, that of the glorious use of purse and sword, your honoured race doth not despoil itself. Nature and use so favour it, that, howe'er the guilty head distort the world, alone it goeth straight, and scorns the evil path. And he, now go, for lo, the sun shall not seven times on that bed rest him which the ram now covers, and with all four feet bestrides, ere this thy courteously expressed opinion shall in the middle of thy head be nailed with greater nails than words of other men, unless the course of doom decreed be stayed. End of chapter 56
a quartet of spiritual experience by william blake and others this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by tony addison purgatorio nine anti purgatory the veil of flowers dante's first dream the gate of purgatory already was old titan's concubine whitening upon the orient's balcony outside the arms of her sweet paramour already was her forehead shining bright with gems arranged according to the shape of that cold beast which smites one with its tail and night had at the steps wherewith she climbs already taken two where we were then and now the third was lowering its wings when i who had somewhat of adam in me or come with sleep reclined upon the grass on which all five of us were sitting then near morning at the hour in which the swallow begins to sing her melancholy lays perchance in memory of her earliest woes and when much more a pilgrim from the flesh and less imprisoned by its thoughts a mind well nigh prophetic in its vision is an eagle in a dream i seem to see suspended in the sky with plumes of gold and wings outspread intent on swooping down and it appeared to me that i was where his friends were left behind by ganymede when to the highest council he was raised i thought within myself perhaps this bird is wont to strike but here and from elsewhere perhaps disdains to lift one with its claws then having wheeled a while it seemed to me that terrible as lightning it came down and bore me up as far as to the fire there it and i both seemed to burn together and so intense was that imagined burning my sleep was broken of necessity achilles roused himself no differently turning around him his awakened eyes nor knowing in what region he might be when sleeping in her arms his mother took him away from chiron to the isle of cyrus from which the greeks removed him afterwards then i aroused myself when from my face sleep led away and death like pale i turned like one who freezes when overcome by fright only my comforter was at my side and now the sun was higher than two hours and toward the open sea my face was turned be not afraid my lord then said to me be reassured for we are faring well restrain not but expand thine every power at purgatory art thou now arrived behold the cliff there which encloses it behold the entrance where it broken seems just now when in the dawn preceding day thy soul was sleeping in thee on the flowers wherewith the place down yonder is adorned a lady came and said i am lucia allow me to take up this sleeping man i shall assist him thus upon his way sordello and the other noble forms remained she took thee and when daylight dawned hither came up and in her footprints i she laid thee here and first her lovely eyes revealed to me that opened entrance then both she and sleep together passed away like one who when in doubt is reassured and into comfort turns his fear when once the truth has been disclosed to him i changed 
and when my leader wholly freed from care beheld me upward o'er the cliff he moved and i behind him followed toward the height reader thou surely seest how i exalt my subject therefore be thou not surprised if i support it now with greater art nearer we drew and were in such a place that where at first there seemed to be a break just like a fissure that divides a wall i saw a gate and under to approach it three steps of different colour each and then a keeper who as yet said not a word and as i opened more and more mine eyes i saw him sitting on the upper step such in his face that i endured him not and in his hand he had a naked sword which so reflected upon us its rays that toward him up i turned my eyes in vain say what it is you wish from where you are he then began and where your escort is beware lest coming up should do you harm a heavenly lady of these things aware my teacher answered him said unto us just now go thither yonder is the gate and unto good may she advance your steps the courteous keeper of the gate resumed come forward therefore unto these our stairs made of white marble was the first great step to which we came so polished and so smooth i mirrored me therein as i appear the second step darker than purple black was of a rough and calcine kind of stone cracked lengthwise and across the third which rests in massive shape above it seemed to me to be a porphyry as flaming red as blood appears when spurting from a vein upon this last god's angel held both feet sitting upon the threshold which to me appeared to be a rock of adamant up over these three steps my leader then drew me along with my good will and said humbly request him to undo the lock devoutly at his holy feet i cast me i begged that of his mercy he would open but first i smote upon my breast three times then with his sword sharp point he traced seven peas upon my brow and told me see thou to it that when inside thou wash away these wounds ashes or earth when excavated dry would with his garments of one colour be and from beneath it he drew forth two keys one was of gold the other silver was first with the white and after with the yellow he so did to the gate that i was pleased whenever one of these keys faileth so that in the lock it doth not rightly turn said he to us this passage opens not more precious is the first and yet the other ere it unlock much skill and judgment needs for it is that one which unties the knot peter from whom i hold them bade me err rather in opening than in keeping closed provided folk fell prostrate at my feet he pushed the holy portal's door thereat and said to us go in but i inform you that he who looks behind returns outside and when that sacred gateway's folding doors which were of strong resounding metal made were on their iron hinges turned around tarpeia roared not so nor proved so shrill when good metellus was removed from her because of which she afterwards kept lean 
i turned to heed its first resounding tones and thee we praise o lord i seemed to hear in voices mixed with those delightful sounds what i was hearing made upon me then just the impression one is wont to get when people with an organ sing for now the words are heard and now again are not purgatorio tem purgatory the first ring pride instances of humility the expiation of pride when past the threshold of the gate we were whose use the evil love of souls impairs because it makes the crooked path seem straight twas by its sound i knew that it had closed and had i turned mine eyes in its direction what would have fittingly excused my fault we mounted through a fissure in the rock which moved about to this side and to that as moves a wave that flees and draweth near a little skill must here be used by us my leader then began in keeping close now here now there to the receding side this caused our steps to be so slow and short that to her bed the waning moon had gone to rest herself again ere we had issued forth from that needle's eye but when set free we were and in the open up above where back the mountain side recedes i weary and both of us uncertain of our way stopped short upon a level place up there more lonely than our roads through desert lands from where its margin borders on the void up to the foot of that high rising bank would measure thrice a human body's length and far as e'er mine eye could wing its flight now on the right and now upon the left such did this girding ledge appear to me our feet have not been moving on it yet when i perceived the bank surrounding it which being perpendicular could not be climbed white marble was and so adorned with carvings that not only polyclitus but nature too would there be put to shame the angel who to earth came with the word of peace which wept for during many years had after its long closure opened heaven appeared before us there in gentle mien sculptured so truthfully it did not seem that he could be an image that is dumb one would have sworn that he was saying hail for she was there portrayed in effigy who turned the key that opened love on high and in her mien and acts she had the words behold the handmaid of the lord impressed as clearly as a figure stamped in wax keep not thy mind on one place only fixed my gentle teacher said who had me there on that side of him where one has his heart i therefore moved my eyes and further on than mary on the side where him i had who urged me to go on i then beheld another story graven in the rock passing by virgil therefore I drew near, so that it might be set before mine eyes. Cut in the marble there, the cart and oxen were drawing up the holy ark, which made men dread a charge not given them in trust. People in front appeared, and all of them, forming seven choirs, made one of my two senses say no, and the other one say yes they sing so too by reason of the incense smoke which there was pictured forth my eyes and nose became discordant as to yes and no the humble psalmist there 
with loins girt up, came dancing on before the blessed vessel, and doing so was more and less than king. And Mikau, opposite to this portrayed, was from a palace window looking down, as would an angry woman filled with scorn. From where I was, I onward moved my feet, that I might closely note another tale, which after Mikau gleamed upon me white. The glorious action of that Roman prince was storied here, whose worth moved Gregory to win his mighty triumph. I refer to Emperor Trajan. At his bridal stood a widow, who in tears showed signs of grief. The space around him there seemed trampled down and thronged with horsemen, while above his head eagles, it seemed, upon a field of gold, were fluttering in the wind. Among all these the sorrowing woman seemed to say, My lord, avenge me for the slaying of my son, which breaks my heart. And he, to answer her, Wait now till I return. And she, like one whom sorrow makes impatient, said, But what, my lord, if thou shouldst not return? And he, that one will do it, who shall hold my place. How shall another's goodness help thy case? She answered him, if thou forget thine own. Then he, now be thou comforted, for need must I perform my duty ere I leave. Justice so wills, and pity keeps me here. He, to whose vision naught was ever new, created this seen language, new to us, since not found here on earth. While with delight I looked upon the pictures of such great humilities, which for their maker's sake are also dear to see. On this side, lo, much people come, but slow the steps they take, the poet murmured, toward the grades above, these souls will send us forward on our way. Mine eyes, intent on gazing, to behold new things, for which with eagerness they longed, in turning toward him, were not slow to move. Yet I'd not have thee, reader, shrink dismayed from thy good purposes, through hearing how God wills it, that what is due be paid. Heed not the nature of the torment, think of what comes after, think that at the very worst beyond the judgment day it cannot go. Then I began, That teacher which toward us I see advancing does not look like people, nor know I what, my sight is so deceived. And he to me, Their torments, heavy nature, so bows them toward the ground, that my eyes too struggled therewith at first, but steadily gaze there, and disentangle with thine eyes what underneath those stones is coming on. Thou now canst see how each one smites himself, O oh, ye proud Christians, sad and weary creatures, who sick in mental vision put your trust in backward-moving steps, perceive ye not that worms we are, created but to form the angelic butterfly which flies unscreened to judgment? Why then is it that your mind soars up in pride, since ye are, as it were, defective insects, even as is a worm, in which formation is not yet complete. As to hold up a ceiling or a roof in lieu of corbel, one perceives at times a human figure joining knees to breast, which out of unreality gives birth to real distress in him who sees it. Such seemed these to me when I had given good heed. They were, in truth, both more and less bad damn, as each had 
more or less upon his back but he that in his acts most patient was seemed to say weeping i can bear no more purgatorio eleven purgatory the first ring pride the lord's prayer the proud our father thou that in the heavens dost dwell not circumscribed but for the greater love thou hast for what thou madest first on high let both thy name and worth be given praise by every creature even as it is meet that to thy loving spirit thank be given and may thy kingdom's peace come down to us since we cannot attain it of ourselves for all our striving save it also come as gladly of their will thine angels make a sacrifice to thee singing all hail so likewise gladly may men do with theirs give us this day our daily spirit food without which through this bitter wilderness he backward goes who onward toileth most and as we pardon every one the wrong we've suffered of thy mercy do thou us forgive regarding not what we deserve our virtue which is easily o'ercome test thou not through our ancient enemy but set us free from him who tempts it so this last request dear lord is not indeed made for ourselves who need not make it here but is for their sakes who behind us stayed thus praying good speed for themselves and us those shades beneath the burden went their way not unlike that whereof one dreams at times unequally tormented all of them and weary o'er the first ring round and round purging away the world's defiling mists if good things there be always said for us what can be said and done on their behalf down here by those whose will is rooted well surely one ought to help them wash away the stains they brought with them that they may issue cleansed and unburdened to the starry spheres pray so may pity and justice speedily unburden you that ye may move unto your wings and raise yourselves according to your wish show us on which hand lies the shortest way to reach the stair and be there more than one teach us the pass that hath the gentlest slope for owing to the load of adam's flesh which clothes his spirit he who with me comes is slow in climbing though against his will as to the words which in reply they said to those which he whom i was following spoke it was not evident from whom they came but this was said come with us on the right along the bank and ye shall find the pass which may be climbed by one that's still alive and were i not prevented by the stone which tames my haughty neck and forces me to keep my face bowed down at this man here who liveth still and telleth not his name i'd look to see if he is one i know and stir his pity for this heavy load latin i was and born to a great tuscan guglielmo aldobrandesco was my father i know not if you ever knew his name my forebears ancient blood and noble deed caused me to be so arrogant that i unmindful of our common mother earth held every man in scorn to such extent i died for it as well know siena's folk and every child in campagnatico i am umberto not to me alone doth this work ill for pride hath with itself drawn all my kin into calamity and here for this must i needs bear this load among the dead till god be satisfied since i among the living bore it not listening i bowed my face and one of them not he who had been speaking 
writhed around under the burden which was hampering him, and having seen and recognized me called, and kept his eyes with effort fixed on me, who, as I went along with them, was stooping. Then, oh, said I, art thou not Odorisi, the glory of Agobio, and the art which is in Paris called illuminating? Brother, said he, more smiling are the parchments which Franco Bolognese paints. The glory is now all his, and only partly mine, because of that great longing to excel, whereon my heart was set. I certainly would not have been so courteous while I lived. Here is the forfeit paid for pride like this. Nor should I be here yet, had it not been that while I still could sin, I turned to God. Oh, empty glory of our human powers, how short a time green lasts upon its top, unless uncultured ages overtake it. One Kimabue thought that he would hold the field in painting, yet the cry is all for Giotto now, hence that one's fame is dark. Thus hath one Guido taken from the other the glory of our tongue, and he is born, perhaps, who from the nest will banish both. Worldly repute is but a breath of wind, which cometh now from here, and now from there, and shifts its name, because its quarter shifts. What greater fame shalt thou have, if when old thou quit thy flesh, than hadst thou died, ere pap and chink were dropped, a thousand years from now? For that, if to eternity compared, is shorter than the twinkling of an eye, is to the skies, most slowly moving sphere. All Tuscany proclaim the fame of him who walked so slowly on the road before me. Yet hardly is a whisper of him left in Siena now, whose governor he was, what time the rage of Florence was destroyed, which then as haughty was as abject now. Your worldly fame it's like the hue of grass, which comes and goes, and he discolours it, through whom it springs up tender from the ground. And I, thy true speech, heartening me with good humility, thou prickst my swollen pride. But who is he of whom thou spokest just now? That, he replied, is Provençan Salvani, and here he is, because presumptuously he brought all Siena under his control. Thus hath he gone, and without rest he goes, as since he died. Who yonder dares too much, in satisfaction, pays such coin as this? And I then, if the spirit who delays before repenting till the verge of life abides below, and cometh not up here, unless good prayers assist him, till as long a time be passed as he had been alive, wherefore hath this man's coming been vouchsafed? When, in his greatest glory, he replied, all shame removed, he freely took his stand in Sieno's campo, and there to free a friend, suffering in Charles's prison, he brought himself to quake in every vein, I'll say no more, and know that what I say is darkly spoken. But so ere long will thine own neighbours act, that thou be able to interpret it. This deed of his relieved him from those bounds. Purgatorio 12 Purgatory, the first ring, pride, instances of punished pride, the angel of humility. With equal steps, like oxen going yoked, I went along beside that burdened soul, as long as my dear pedagogue allowed. But when he said, Leave him, and go thou on, for here tis well that each should urge his back, with sail and oars, as much as e'er he can. 
I straightened me, as much as walking called for, although my thoughts kept humble and depressed. On had I moved, and in my teacher's step was following willingly, and both of us were showing now how light of step we were. When downward turn thine eyes, he said to me, well will it be to calm thee on thy way that thou shouldst see the bed thy souls are treading. As over those that neat them buried lie, that they may be recalled to people's minds, tombs level with the ground the record bear of what they were before, whence there they oft are wept for through the prick of memory which spurs to grief the pitiful alone. Even so I saw engraved in sculpture here though finer in respect to workmanship, as much as from the mount juts out as part. I saw, on one side, him who once was made nobler by far than any other creature, fall like a flash of lightning down from heaven. I saw Briarius on the other side, pierced by an arrow from the sky, like prone and heavy on the ground with mortal cold. I saw Apollo, Mars I saw, and Pallas, as still in armour, round their sire they stood, gazing upon the giant scattered limbs. I saw great Nimrod, neath his mighty work, dumb with confusion, as he watched the folk, who once were proud with him on Shinar's plain. O oh, Niobe, with what sad eyes I thee saw pictured forth in stone, between thy children, the seven and seven thy dead upon the road. O soul, how plainly there, on thine own sword, didst thou seem dead upon Gilboa's mount, which felt there after neither rain nor dew. O mad Arachne, thee I saw, as when, already half a spider, thou wast sad amid the tatters of thy fatal work. O oh, Rehoboam, not a threat seems now thy face, but terror-stricken, as a way a chariot bears thee, lest thou be pursued. It showed, moreover, that hard pavement did, how costly one Sathmaeum caused his mother's unlucky ornament to seem to her. It showed how, in the temple's walls, his sons cast themselves on Sennacherib, and how, when he was dead, they there abandoned him. It showed the slaughter and the cruel woe wrought by Tomiris, when she said to Cyrus, With blood I fill thee, that didst thirst for blood. It showed, too, how the Assyrians took to flight, routed when Holofernes had been killed, and also what was of that slaughter left. I saw proud Troy in ashes and in caves. O oh, Ilium, how degraded and how vile it showed thou wast, the image there perceived. What master or a brush or graving tool could reproduce the shadows and the features which there would cause all cultured minds to wonder? The dead seemed dead, the living seemed alive. Whoever saw the real, no better saw than I then did what I was treading on, as long as bowed I walked. Be ye then proud, and go with haughty looks, ye sons of Eve, nor bow your heads to see your evil part. More of the mountain had we circled now, and of the sun's course far more had we spent than my not disengaged mind had supposed, when he, who always walked attentively ahead of me, began, Lift up thy head, the time for going thus absorbed is past. See there an angel who is making ready to come toward us. See how the sixth handmaiden returns now from the service of the day. With reverence adorn thine acts and face, 
that he may now be pleased to send us up. Think that this day will never dawn again. So well accustomed was I to his warning, that I should never let my time be lost, that on this theme he could not darkly speak. Toward us the lovely creature was advancing, arrayed in white, and in his countenance, such as, when trembling, seems the morning star. His arms he opened, then he oped his wings, and said to us, Come, nearby are the steps, and going up is easy after this. Only a few to this announcement come, O human race, why born for upward flight, fallest thou so before a little wind? He led us on to where the rock was cut, and there my forehead with his wings he stroked, and promised that my passage would be safe, as on the right hand to ascend the mount where seated is the church, which dominates the well-ruled town or Rubaconte's bridge. The slope's bold flight is broken by the stairs constructed in an age when choir and stave were safe, so likewise doth the bank relax, which from the next ledge here quite steeply falls, but closely on each side the high rock rubs. While, turning thither, we were on our way, Blessed are the poor in spirit! Voices sang in such a way as words could not describe. Alas! How different are the passes here from those in hell, for one up here goes in with songs, but there below with frightful wails. We now were climbing up the holy stairs, and lighter far I felt than formerly I seemed to be when on the level ground. I hence said, Teacher, say what heavy thing has been removed from me, that as I walk I almost feel no weariness at all. He answered, When the peas, which still remain, almost extinct upon thy brow, are quite erased, as one is now, thy feet will so be conquered by good will, that they will feel not only no fatigue, but it will be a pleasure to them to be upward urged. I then did, as do those who go about with something on their head they know not of, till others' gestures cause them to suspect whereat their hand assists in ascertaining, searches, and finds, and so performs the work which cannot be accomplished by their sight. And with my right hand's fingers spread, I found that only six the letters were, which he who held the keys had all my temples cut, on seeing which my leader smiled with joy. End of chapter 57